Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Ultimate Social Selling. This is Barbara Rasconi, and I'm excited today to tell you how you can power up, lead up, speed up, and grow up your business in all kinds of ways using the power of social media. This webinar is brought to you by Insurance WebEx. I'm honored to be one of their professional sales mentor advisors. And the um, topic today, as I said, is social selling. So let's get started and jump in right away. Well, here in Illinois, it has been a very, very slow start to spring. So slow that this week we had snow and ice, even though it's April. And you know, it's, it's kind of when things are frozen, nothing is growing. And when you're in insurance sales, if things are frozen and nothing is growing, it means you have no appointments and no leads. So if you see, a notification like this in your email that says, you have no appointments, enjoy your time off. That's great if you're on vacation, but if you're not, then that's something you need to worry about. And studies have shown that up to 92% of insurance agents and financial advisors rate lead generation as their biggest challenge ever. It's, it's tough, but it doesn't have to be. Social selling is working for people who are in sales. This is from LinkedIn. And you can see that the social selling leaders are the ones who get 45% more opportunities, 51% more likely to achieve goals, and 78% outsell their peers who don't use social media. So this is all very exciting. It's kind of like, if you want the secret formula, here it is. And that's great, but how does it work? So what I'd like to encourage you to do is just take a minute to get out a paper and a pen or open a window to take notes if you haven't already, because what we're gonna do is, be, is cover some really good strategies. And along the way, if you see something that you might like to try, I'd like you to take a note of it and then promise yourself that you are going to try at least one of these tactics. If you stay throughout the webinar, I'm going to be giving you a link to a superstar LinkedIn guide you can get for free. And if you'd like to continue and work a little bit more on developing your social selling skills, we'll talk about how to do that at the end. So let's keep going. It's great that social selling leaders get such fantastic results. Are there people who are really doing it? Well, yes. In fact, last year in 2017, almost half of social pros or selling pros, sales pros, sales professionals, let's try that, <laughs> said that they're going to spend more time leveraging social. This year at 70% and then next year, I just took the difference between 48 and 70 and added it up to say that, that almost everyone is going to be spending more time on social. Well, that's awesome, I love that, but Spending time does not always mean getting results. So what are the ways that uh, professionals are going to be using social selling? These are for B2B and your business may be B2B, which is business to business. So maybe you're selling programs for business owners or for companies to offer their employees. And B2C of course is business to consumers. So that would be to uh, people who, who are on their own, so it might be like a life insurance policy or something like that. When we look at the results of these two studies from eMarketer.com, we find that the top social selling tools are for lead development, account research, and call preparation. Those are the top three. So right around exactly what we're talking about, how to get more sales, how to get more leads. And then the primary benefits are reduced account contact and research time, that's number one. So it can really save you time, increase your number of leads, and help you develop deeper relationships with clients. So social selling is a, a way to really help you do what you're doing already even better. And what it's going our system that we're gonna talk about today is the ultimate social selling success system. It's a program I put together based on years of experience, and we're gonna talk about how to power up, lead up, speed up, 
measure up and grow up by using digital marketing, direct marketing, dynamic marketing, data analysis, and then a content marketing plan. If you're on Twitter, by the way, you can tweet me at WiredPRWorks. I'm not watching that right now but because I'm talking to you, but if you would like to uh, tweet me, and then these are my social profiles on the bottom if you want to look at LinkedIn and then also Instagram if you'd like to just see what's happening there. And you might be wondering, well, who is this person and what does she know about social selling? And the reason I'm here is because I love working with salespeople. I've been working with insurance sales pros to develop leads ever since I got out of college and I joined Dun & Bradstreet. My job was to help insurance agents use our lead system so that they could sell more small group health insurance to business owners. It was a great job. I learned a lot. And then after that, I went on to actually do sales. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. And then also become a national sales trainer for Blue Cross and Blue Shield, where I learned that if I talk to the people who are having challenges and ask them what their challenges were, and then I ask the people who were the leaders, how would you manage these challenges? I put the answers together and we work through it. The sales results increased by almost 400%, which was very exciting. And I know personally, as a salesperson, I, I was the worst salesperson in the world. After I had my job at Dun & Bradstreet, I decided to get into sales myself. And I was selling group life insurance and it was, seemed like a product no one wanted. I was absolute worst salesperson ever. And so I resigned and I was in Indiana and my boss said, well, what are you gonna do? And I said, well, I'm gonna move to Chicago again because I moved into Indiana. And he said, well, do you have a job? I said, no. And he said, well, I guess you can work for me. And I, I did not want to get back into sales, but I did. And I wound up leading the company. So I know what it's like to really struggle and not feel like anything good is happening. And then to be a, a leader and really make things happen. And I love to bring this experience in, in these types of learnings and strategies to everyone I work with. This is uh, an example of... Uh, how to present yourself socially. This is on Instagram, my nine best images. This is from last year. It's kind of fun to see what your followers think about you and what they rate. So it's really what they voted for my top nine images. And you can see here, I, I love to teach and train. So there's a couple of pictures of that. Do you have three children? One of them, our youngest just graduated from college. I like desserts, like to go to conferences. I love stats. I'm an author in two superstar books. I have a blog, Wired PR Works, that was started in 2006. And I've been teaching writing for the web since 2002. I'm a member of the National Speakers Association. If any of you are interested in a career as a professional speaker, I would suggest you check them out. I founded Social Media Club Chicago in 2008. And at that time, we really didn't know what was gonna happen with social media. We had no idea that it was gonna really impact our lives the way it does and continues to do. And then my company is Corey West Media. Now, this is a, 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 an image of me. This is at a rehearsal for a presentation I did for Million Dollar Roundtable. And when those doors opened, I thought, wow, I saw these screens with my picture and I thought, wow, I, I really, made it, I, I just felt so excited to be able to share ideas. And this was a program called Step on the Marketing and Business Accelerator with LinkedIn. There's no one in the seats because it's a rehearsal. And it was wonderful, I came back and I thought that was great. Well, two weeks ago, I was sitting somewhere and I got a notification, I was at a conference, I got a notification on LinkedIn that someone had mentioned me. And this is from Kevin who said that he achieved a milestone of 3000 connections on LinkedIn. And he credited my presentation at Million Dollar Roundtable's annual meeting in Vancouver with helping him decide to decide to focus his social media efforts and personal branding on LinkedIn. So that was very gratifying and fulfilling. And that's really what I am led to do is to help put other people on their success path in life. And I hope that today we can get you started on yours. I know we can, and I'm just really excited that you're here and that you're interested in doing even better and using social to help you. So let's start out with power up with personality. 
And you know, the question we had before we even got started was how do you use social media with all the regulations? And for me, it's really about having people like you. It doesn't really matter what you're selling in a way. It, it does because I know you do have to make the sales. But first, they have to want to, to know who you are. And it can start with something as simple as um, your, your social profiles. I feel like the biggest missing piece of content marketing, like the secret sauce that your competitors don't know about, is PR. And I am redefining PR as personality and reputation. Really, broadcasting your personality is important. People want to know who you are. And if you can tie your personality into values, that's really what makes things exciting. And when I do workshops, we do a values personality test. And what I would ask you to do is to think about three role models, people you really admire, and what are the positive values or attributes you associate with them. So for example, I have a friend named Amy. And if somebody said, what do you admire about Amy? I would say, she's very smart. She's a great business owner. She's um, really funny. She's wonderful to be around and she knows how to sell things. She's very successful. So that would be one role model. Another role model might be one of my clients I've had for a long time, Jim. And so what would I say about Jim? I would say that Jim is willing to try new things. He is in a really cool industry design. So he's very creative and um, he is always looking to make things happen and make things grow. So what you want to do is you want to look at all three of these people. You could do three, five, ten, and you want to start looking for words that pop up over and over again. What are the attributes that really describe this person? And when you see those and you see the repeats, that really describes you. And the more you can understand what your personal values are, the better you'll be able to connect with people who have those same values. And it's really important because that way your business is going to be better. Now, if you want to do research on personality, you can do that on Twitter. This happens to be uh, a demographic for my Twitter followers. We can see that they're interested in technology. Really, 80% are interested in technology versus all of Twitter of only 22%. So when you look at what your followers are interested in on other platforms, that gives you a key to the types of content they're going to be looking for. So yes, you're in a highly regulated industry. You can't really talk about your products and you, you can't make promises about uh, price or coverages. But if you know that you really click with people who are techie and they're into the latest iPhone, you can post updates about that and you can talk about your own technology experiences and that will connect you with those people. You can also, even if you don't have a big audience on Twitter, you can look at Twitter's personas and demographics, which is, we'll drill down and give you some insights about who's who. And really when you're in sales, what you want to do is you want to really develop the target person you're looking for, even to look at their buying styles, so if you know your target, your target consumer or your target customer is interested in premium brands, so they like high-end luxury items, that's going to be a different type of personality profile that you want to convey than another group that might be interested in more budget-conscious decisions. And why is it important when you look at personality, you can also take that into personalize. Why is that important? Well, people are becoming expectant. They really want their communications personalized. And if you're in B2B, you know, 65% of your buyers are going to switch brands if you don't personalize their communications. I, this is some a homework or an assignment I'd like you all to consider doing. I'd like you to consider going to makemypersona.com. It's put together by HubSpot. It's a generator for you to really go in and develop your top buyer personas. And what I would do is I would look at your ideal buyer or your ideal customer, even if it's someone you don't have yet. Maybe you want to move into a different tier. Maybe you want to sell more retirement income products. 
Maybe you want to look at uh, selling more life insurance to millennials. So really look at who your target customers are so you can spot them. It could even be what companies do they work for, what are their titles. But the more you know who you're looking for, the better your results are going to be. And social can really help you really customize not only your presentation and your search, but also it can really customize the way people see you online. And that leads into reputation. One of the things I hear a lot is people want to be thought leaders on social media. And yes, that's great. And you, know, you don't have to be a major, major influencer on LinkedIn to be a thought leader. For the people you're talking to, you could be their thought leader for financial services, and you should be. They don't really have anyone else to talk to. That's really the goal is to have you in that position of being an expert. So how do you do that? And is it important to do it on social media? Well, if we look at this survey from IBM, yes, it is. It's, it kind of surprised me that 84% of C-level and VP use social media to inform their decisions. And even across the generations, people do regularly look up sales pros on social. So if they look at your LinkedIn profile and they see this, that's not super convincing, is it? I mean, we don't even know what you look like. There's no background picture. And we are going to, I'm going to give you a link to a LinkedIn profile, 42 point LinkedIn profile review checklist in a minute. So let's look at some statistics from the insurance industry. 87% of people are going to be researching their life insurance options before they even talk to the, the insurance agent. And then I also thought this was interesting. Two thirds would not do business with an advisor who has an out of date website. So you can set all the social media aside. If your website is not up to date, then I would move that to the front of the list. And it's simple things like I was looking for, uh, I was evaluating some people for a real estate industry project. And it, this is a little bit of a different industry, but they're people who are highly visible and really make a lot of connections. I went to one and the person's very friendly in real life, but on their professional website, they came across as being disconnected. All the social links were broken, except for one, which went to LinkedIn, just the main page. So it's simple things like that. Look at your website and make sure that your social links are live, that they go where you want them to go. And it doesn't have to be a brand new snappy 2018 website, but it does need to be mobile and responsive. So if people can't see your website on their phone, that's not good. It needs to be a responsive, that's the term for a website that shows up really nicely on mobile, it's mobile ready. These are stats from the, this 2018 insurance barometer study. I pulled these from a blog post. You can download the 2017. It's there and probably 2018 will be up soon. Well, one of the things I found from 2017 is the top three important factors when purchasing life insurance. What is the number one? It has to be easy to understand all across the board. Every age, that's the first thing they want is they want it to be easy to understand. So if you position yourself as a person who's easy to get to know, you explain things well, then that automatically gives you an edge. And it can be simple things like on social media, do you share how-to articles? Do you answer questions? Do you break things down? And that's really important for people. Reputation can also be what, how people see you online. And these are some examples from some big insurance companies. I remember a few years ago when our kids said to us, that for some reason they really got into car insurance. I think it's because they were watching too many commercials. And they said, hey, mom, do we have car insurance with the lizard? And I said, no, it's not a lizard and we don't. <laughs> and then they said, how about that? woman who works at the diner, I said, no, she doesn't work at a diner and we do not have insurance with them. 
how about that person that makes all kinds of trouble? And I said, no. And, and they got kind of upset because we did not have a fun insurance company. And I, I said, well, you know, insurance isn't all about fun. Although a lot of people do want kind of a, a fun element. And with reputation, it's kind of tricky. If you work for a company that has fun commercials, of course, go ahead and share those. But not everybody gets the joke. You know, that's, that's part of the issue. So with reputation, you do have to be careful, but also understand that people are looking for some kind of a, a reputation that goes along with the personality. So for example, when I did a presentation for the International Association of Privacy Professionals, specifically for financial services, I looked at what top banks and financial services companies around the world were doing on social media. A couple of things popped out that were very successful. One covered football or soccer as we call it in the US and they had a ton of followers. And another one was all about the best Indian food. They're kind of out there, but you could take that and you could have the reputation as being the one who is the news channel for your community on social. That's something that has nothing to do with your business or regulations, but if they know that you're the one who's gonna post fun events and social, pretty soon people start to see you as that. You could even do a podcast if you wanted it and, and interview people in town. You could do live videos. There's a lot you can do that give you the reputation as being a leader and also having a great personality without even talking about all the specifics of your products. Influencer marketing is really hot in marketing and social media right now. Marketing is so trendy. It's like fashion. And <laughs> some people say that if you do influencer marketing, then you will get 11 times the ROI of any other marketing. And I know we're talking about social selling. Influencer marketing is a form of social selling. And what it means is you partner with people who already have an audience on social media to have them share your message. So it could be something like a spring fashion show and you, your agency, you are the one who really put it all together and you invite some influencers to come and either cover it or actually be in the fashion show if you wanna do this. And what it does is it aligns you with people who already have an audience who are mentioning your name and it feels more natural. If you're really interested in how to work with influencers, you can listen to this podcast I did on Influence Pros. And this was really the Hospitality Professionals Guide to Social Influencer Event Marketing. You're not really a hospitality professional, but if you're interested in doing any events at all, it's going to be something good for you to read and to know about. And let's face it, if you have friends who are influencers, then it just makes your life a lot easier. They can share your message. Another way to really up your reputation on social media is to align with organizations that are influential within your industry. So for instance, this is MDRT, Million Dollar Roundtable. Even if you don't share this with your network, and I'm not sure that you would want to, it still is a great place to go for resources. So for instance, this update is about how to ask the right questions. And if you're wondering what kind of questions can I ask my clients or what do other people do, this is a good post to go look at and get some ideas from. Reputation also comes back to what you're sharing on social media. Every single post contributes. And this is a tool called Write Relevance that will allow you to set up recommended topics. So you can go in and kind of like design your own newsfeed. You can pick what topics you want to look at and it will go through and pull the top shares. So it makes it very easy for you to have a look at what you're going to curate. And as a curator, what you want to do is you want to really pick the best of the best to share. I like to tell our clients to have four different channels on social media. So since you're in life insurance, one of them might be fitness because people want to have a healthy life. And there's all kinds of things you can share with fitness. It could be running, uh, it could be tennis, it could be things that are going on at your local club. It could be wellness. If you do wellness, that could be yoga. It could be healthy eating. 
You could talk about travel. If you know your clients love travel, that's a great one. And you can always share on hashtag travel Tuesday. And then motivation, I think is important. Motivation Monday, Monday motivation, both are hashtags you can use where you can share every Monday quotes that mean something to you. People are on social media for a lot of reasons. And on LinkedIn, they're there because they want industry news and updates. They also want motivation. And if you can position yourself as a person who can give them some brightness and some inspiration, then you become more and more of a person for them to want to know better. Another way to think about reputation is how to slide into that slot as a thought leader and a publisher on LinkedIn. If you're interested in details on that, I did contribute to an article. Actually, I was interviewed for the article on Inc. from Inc. And the article is called, We Can All Be LinkedIn Influencers, Here's How. So there's some guidelines on how to do that. And then on the right-hand side of the slide are, is one of my best articles ever. And it was called, Five Ways to Sidestep the Social Media Sinkhole. So if you're doing articles on LinkedIn, you need to have a catchy headline. One of the trends right now is to ask a question. So if you can think of a question that people ask you a lot, um, you know, it might be something like, um, if it's about, you want to stay, maybe you want to stay away from insurance, but um, maybe it could be something as simple as what kind of insurance do I need when I buy a new house, something like that. Another thing it could be is, um, you know, uh, top tips to save money. And maybe what you do for people who are interested in financial planning, maybe what you do is you go out and you look at the articles that you really like, find the ones that are doing the best, and then add your take to it, link into them. And even if you want to interview people, that's great. If you interview somebody who's a thought leader with budgeting, then you can mention them and then they can share your information in the network. When you write these articles, it's really important to have a great image. We know that the brain processes, processes images 60,000 times faster than text. And this is an image of an actual sinkhole. It's the sinkhole from the Corvette Museum in Kentucky. I am on the media list for GM and they sent me this picture, so I used that. And there's also just a quick lead in. So this is a true or false. And true or false is always a good lead in. People like that. You know, you can take both sides of it. And if you want to read that story, you can. It's, it's kind of a fun one. So we've talked about how to power up with personality. And it's really important for you to look at your values. That's one piece of it. And then also to really design and develop your target buyer persona, and that could be plural. It should be plural. You can have more than one person that you're looking for. Then lead up with reputation. How, are, how do people see you? Uh, what kind of thought leadership do you want to have? And keep in mind that people are going to be evaluating you via social. It's, it's all going to happen there. So how do you get this to work and how do you make it go faster? Well, dynamic marketing is going to happen with the wired system. This is what it looks like. It's a system I designed to really simplify content marketing and communications. It works for almost everything that, well, everything we do and almost every plan I work with, I'm like, wow, we can backtrack it and take it apart or put it together with the wired system. It's been presented to companies as large as the Federal Reserve all the way down to junior high students. And it, people get it and that's why I like it. It, content marketing can be really mystifying, and this really makes it easier. The first thing we talk about is words, and all the images that you'll see are from Paris. This is words, uh, and if you want to see what keywords you have in your LinkedIn profile, here's a way to do it. With words, it's really a whole communications foundation. We can't get into the whole thing today, but if you keep in mind what keywords do you want to use for search, we'll just focus on those. This would be another assignment for you to do. Go to your LinkedIn profile, copy it, then take it over to this tool called wordle.net. It's a word cloud generator. So what you'll find is the more frequent the words are in your profile, the bigger they'll pop up. 
And this is important because this is where you can really talk about your products and services. You can say what your specialties are. So you're really not selling anything, but if you say specialties and they turn up, then you can see what's, uh, how those all look. It's, it's important for you to make sure that you do have keywords that are gonna pop up. And on your LinkedIn profile, you want your keywords in your professional headline, your summary, job descriptions, those kinds of places. And if you have a company page, then it's important to take them over there as well. So where do these keywords work? They do work on LinkedIn and they work on your phone. So this is another assignment for you is to ask Siri what she knows about you. And you'll see on the left, I asked Siri, I said, Siri, find Barbara Rosconi on the web. So the first thing that comes up is my website, barbarosconi.com, then LinkedIn, then Corey West Media, and then Wired PR Works. So I like to see what people are gonna see if they do a voice search. Then I ask, find an ultimate social selling speaker. And this made me feel really good. The first one was from LinkedIn, and then the second result was from a press release I did. This is going to be happening more and more. People are going to be searching for you on their phone if they're not already. So you wanna make sure that you check and see what they see. You could even say, I could say, Siri, find me an insurance agent in Glen Ellen, Illinois, and see who pops up. Or I could go over to Yelp, because a lot of what voice activated search, especially in Siri, gets is from Yelp. And if I looked for best independent insurance agent in Chicago, 88 insurance agents are already listed on Yelp. So if you're not on Yelp, and I know, I know, it's like, that's where I go for restaurants. I know, me too. And I would, when I do presentations like this, I'm always shocked to see how many businesses are on Yelp. So think about that, that social. And then we look at what you've got to contend with there. If you search for insurance agents on Google, you get 41.1 million results. Now, keep in mind, that's two words. Then if we go to the US on LinkedIn, there are 263,665 people that have insurance agent in their profile, and then 5,547 are in Chicago. So it's really important when you think about words, you've got insurance agents or insurance agent, the town that you're in, and if you specialize in a certain group, I know I, I talked to an insurance agent from New Zealand and his specialty was barristers. So if uh, you wanted to put on LinkedIn, insurance agent in Chicago area specializing in attorneys, financial planners, or um, you could put accountants, something like that. It's really important to specify exactly who you want to serve and that ties back into the first part we talked to. Now the next part of the wired system is fame and intention. So what do you wanna be when you grow up and who do you wanna help? If you look at this image, we've got the fame and neon and then a building in the background. So it's great to have that glamor on the front, but what are you really trying to do? Who are you trying to help and what are your intentions? Here is if you're looking for a way to, if your intention is to be a superstar on LinkedIn. This is the free download I was talking about. So I'll leave this up here for a minute so you can get this. And if you don't get it right now, don't worry. You are going to get an email that thanks you for attending and you will have this link in that email as well. This is going to give you the download to the LinkedIn Superstar ebook as well as the 42 point checklist that will really help you go through and look at what's missing and lacking in your LinkedIn profile. That's one of the services we offer. We work with companies to really define what the company's presence is gonna look like on LinkedIn, and then we look at each of the partners and even on down through the company what their LinkedIn profile should look like. It's really exciting when it's all done because it's consistent. And if you can imagine, you know, we work with firms where they have these really talented people and some of the most talented ones have a, a really slim, almost vacant LinkedIn profile. And so what we do is we make them consistent across the board so everyone has a really nice, impressive LinkedIn profile that truly represents who they are. So you can go over there and download that. 
some surprising things on LinkedIn. If your intention is to show up on LinkedIn, this uh, try video. This was a video, 36 seconds, that's all it is. A goofy video I did with my friend Beth Mund and we were promoting National Speakers Association Illinois Spring Speakers Academy. I saw her at an event and I asked her before if she'd be willing to do uh, a video and she said yes. So this was our second take. It's a 36 second video, that's it. I put a ribbon in that talks about the event. It's actually a, a school or series of courses and the URL posted on YouTube, brought it back to LinkedIn and it's got over 3000 views. So if your intention is to really be seen, really think about doing video. And this, it was shot on an iPhone that the audio is not fantastic, but I've gotten a lot of response off of it, so I wanted to share that with you. Now routes, how are you gonna get there? And if you have Google Maps on your phone, you know there's a lot of different ways you can get places. You can walk, you can take public transportation, you can drive, you can flag down a ride sharing service. Well, my goal for you is to have you on that express route. I want you to take the fastest track you can take to get from you to the lead, to a client, to a referral. And that's where social media comes in. It's really the fastest way to reach people. And email marketing is also really good. It's uh, one of the top ones. If you look at, here's what I want to tell you. If you look at the most effective online tactics used for lead generation, we've got email, content marketing, and social media. To me, the three of those go hand in hand. Social media can let people know what it can really drive your updates. It can help you research what's exciting or interesting to people. It can help you look at news that you can take back to content marketing. And then you can send all that out via email. They, and it's, you know, they all three play off of each other. So to me, it's a trio that you really have to have. Of course, those other ones are important as well. Now, I thought this was interesting. This is from Content Marketing Institute. You'll see on the left, the types of content B2B marketers use, and on the right, what really works for B2C. So, social media is number one for both. If you're working with businesses, case studies are important, and then videos. And if you're working with consumers, social media is important, then videos, and then photos. So, if most of your market is going to be everyday people, then you really want to have more visual approach. If you're working with companies and you want to approach them, then you need case studies. And you don't really want to talk maybe about, you can't really talk about uh, specific coverages and um, contracts, but what you could do is you could say how long you've been clients and it could be a testimonial about why they like working with you, those kinds of things. Next is the most effective social media platform. On the left, again, we have B2B, and on the right, we have B2C. So on the left, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook are the three top social media platforms. And on the right, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube are the most important. So really, you need to think about if you are working with B2C, more everyday people, LinkedIn has kind of dropped off. They're not on this list, but I would still put them on my list. In fact, I'd make your LinkedIn profile number one and then go from there. And then with Facebook, if you have a company page on Facebook, that's fantastic because you can use that for search on Facebook. You can share from your personal profile. And if you wanted to use that community reporter kind of approach that we talked about before with live broadcasts or, or uh, blog posts, Facebook would let you go live to do that, which could be very exciting. And it ties in with YouTube too. So the next part is experiences. This is the oldest street in Paris and I could just imagine how many people had walked down it. When I think of experiences, you know, with social, we talk about how experiences should be emotional. That's number one. They have to be something that connects with the heart or uh, the, the mind, but it's got to be something that really gives an emotional experience. And what's the ROI for that? It's all along the way. And to me, it goes all throughout the buyer's journey. That's one thing that I would really like to talk about more, and maybe in the next webinar I will, but how do you track your buyer's journey? 
how do they find out about you at the very beginning with interest and then how do you meet with them? How do you come up with a proposal? We'd walk all the way through that buyer's journey, all the way through referral to really make sure that you have a fantastic customer experience. And for companies today, they're really not looking at number of sales as much as they are the customer experience. That's really how they're gauging success. And I think that's a good way to look at it because if your customer experience drops off or if the company's does, if it drops off in the conversion zone, then what happened there? You know, how can you build it back up? So these are some things to think about when you're thinking about ROI. It's not just investment for you with marketing. These are some things that even like innovation and insights that you can get back when you reframe your thinking that way. This I love because as a, an agency, we get called in a lot of different places. You know, we work with a, a big company, smaller companies, and sometimes we get called in to put the sprinkles on the cupcakes. That's how I like to think about it. Everything's all baked up and ready to go. The cupcakes are ready, but there's no sprinkles. And the sprinkles are social media and they, the company wants us to go out there and get the message out, just kind of shower everybody with this creative confetti. Well, that's, it would be so much better if we came in at the beginning and we talked about what kind of cupcakes are we going to make? What kind of batter? Are we gonna have filling, no filling? Are they gonna have bacon in them? Or are they gonna have jelly beans? You know, and really come in on the front end. So when you think about social media, really think about how it integrates into everything you do. Don't separate it and say, oh, it's like our little, I like to think, some people call it like the alien, you know? <laughs> Oh, here comes the alien again. You really want social to be part of everything you do. So when we work with clients, this is a wired social selling solution system. And this is an assignment for you too. If, if you want to think about where am I now? I'm at, I'm at the beginning, advancing, or have I mastered keywords? Do you know where you are with keywords? Is that something you could work on or it's covered? What are your intentions? What are your goals? Do you know what you want to do? And I don't mean just like, you know, I want to sell X amount of dollars this year. What are your intentions as far as marketing and growing your business? How are you helping people? Then routes. Do you know how you're going to get there? You know, there's a lot of different ways to get from Chicago to Milwaukee. There's a quick one, but are you taking a long route or is there a quicker way to get there? Then what is your customer experience map like? Do you know what the journey is like? If not, then make sure you plot it out. And what you might even want to do is talk to your current clients and ask them if, you, if they would meet with you to walk through and make sure that you're hitting all the points they need you to, to hit. You're meeting them every place they need you to. If you think about it as like a, a series of meetings, are you meeting at the right place? Are things happening the way you want them to? What could you do better? And then the design. And the design is going to be uh, digital, direct, and dynamic. This is uh, an image, actually, I guess over 4,000 people protested this Japanese sculpture display at Versailles in Paris. I like it because I like disrupting things in a good way. If you get people to think more modern and different while they still have the traditional and you're just adding a little bit of color and liveliness and fun, I think that's awesome. So we think about design is in 4D. We already talked earlier, we're kind of flipping it around. We talked about digital, which we talked about the personality, direct reputation, then dynamic, the wired system, and then data. So how do we measure up? One of the ways, and if you wanna do this, if you're a sales manager and you have a team or just individually, is to get your LinkedIn social selling index score. LinkedIn offers this free for everyone. It's kind of a, a way to see where you stack up and what you need to work on. I always find it fun to watch this pop up and see what people say. It's kind of fun. So you can do this right now if you want or do it later. And uh, it's for, for sales teams, we do sales training. What we do is we set up KPIs or key performance indicators and we do watch the score to see where the score is going and see if it's going up. This is also a way for LinkedIn to get you to think about buying Sales Navigator, which is a system that's great. It's a bit of an investment, but if you really want to have a dashboard and keep track of your network and contacts on LinkedIn, then Sales Navigator is something to consider. So with data, 
when we first got started in social media, people were saying, oh, you can't measure it. It's not worth anything. And I kept thinking, you know, I think it's going to work out. And it, it has. Uh, we've got so much data on LinkedIn. You've got the actions people have taken. You can look at the sales that you've made from social. And you can also look at your ROI in terms of marketing budget. If you, for instance, if you want to look at Facebook and let's say that that's what you're going to focus on and you're going to do Facebook ads, I would really think about doing events if you can and getting people together. Then you can advertise them on Facebook for as little as five or $10 to target audiences. And even if people don't come to the event, they get to know you and they get to see you. The more you can have a series of events or blog posts or publications or white papers, the more you can make your communications consistent, the more people will see you, it gets you in good training, and it also gets you better deliverability in your network. So that's data. So we've talked about with this ultimate social selling success, success system, uh, first of all, how to power up with your personality and theirs you know, on screen. It's really important to think about how do you look on the phone? And uh, if, if you need help with that, then um, I'm happy to do that. I think it's an audit on your own is something that would be good to do. Then lead up with reputation. Are you where you need to be? Who do you need to be aligned with to get there? How to speed up with the wired system, words, intentions, routes, experiences, and design. How to measure up with ROI, and then how to grow your business up. So now you've got a choice. Do you want to take the cinch trail or the scenic trail? Which way are you going to go? And I took this out in Arizona. I was hiking with my husband and our son. And of course, I'm always the one who wants the cinch trail. I just want to go quick and get there. And the scenic trail, you'll see a lot of things along the way, but it's slow and it's hot in Arizona. If you don't have enough water, you could get really thirsty. And even though you want to turn back, it's really hard to get back to where you started. And with the cinch trail, and you can just hop on to the top, look around, stay there as long as you want. It's, it's really, that's my choice. And if we were going to apply that to marketing, yeah, you can do the DIY trail. You know, you can do it yourself. Uh, some people think it saves money if you try and do your own social media because, you know, you're doing it on your own. It, it can increase your risk. It can be time consuming. It's all subjective because you're deciding what you're going to do. Your personality your reputation could be fuzzy. And of course it is do it yourself. And it's also, I think one of the things about social media is it can be a place where if you love to learn, you can take five or six webinars a day, but you won't get anywhere. So to me, it's kind of like spinning your wheels or maybe not even starting the car and getting anywhere. So that's scenic. Now cinch is, um, it does require a little bit of an investment. It helps you manage your risk. It's efficient, objective. Your personnel and your reputation is clear and on target for you and your target client and you're plugged in. We do help people and companies develop these, I guess it's like a treasure map for marketing <laughs> that really helps you figure out how to get to where you wanna go quickly. And I would like to just show you a little bit. I do do a two day workshop. They can be narrowed down into even like half day, one hour is too short usually, but I just did one here in Chicago, it was two days. And these are some of the things that we covered. I've also done social selling training for the largest LinkedIn training company in Europe, here in the US, that was fun. And to me, it's really helpful to show people how, first of all, to have a thought process around social and really uh, equip them with the tools and the confidence they need to really make a difference. As Kevin, you know, you can see how Kevin built his network up to 3,000 people. It's very exciting for me just to, to see results like that. So what I'm offering today is if you're interested, because I know when I do these webinars, people are like, well, where do I get more information? So I put this offer together for you. This is an idea of a place to start. And this is the ultimate social selling superstar makeover. Usually it's $14.97 or more, depending on the client. It's 
Today I'm offering it for $4.97. It's um, LinkedIn superstar, pro superstar profile review. We'll also look at your website, look at your search engine optimization. Uh, you'll have personalized recommendations for what to do, a customized success path, and a one-hour consultation that is valued at $500. So you're getting the consultation for free, basically. I'm only offering 10 spots. This is not a high pressure uh, offer. If, if it's something you're interested in and you really do want to see what you can do with social selling, I'm really happy to work with you and get you where you need to be. And um, so you can go ahead and sign up. That's the link right there. It will take you directly to the order page. And um, I just wanna thank you for your interest. I'm gonna to get to questions here in a minute. And if this is something you'd like to work on to go from uh, where you are now to working faster and attracting more attention, building your business, generating those leads and clicking with customers, I'd love to help you with that. So now let's go to Q and A. I have that up and, um, oh, I guess my microphone suddenly went down. Did it, did it come back? I hope it did. 